Welcome back to Trojan Sports Now, and with this being homecoming week, uh, football is the big subject, but another homecoming tradition is brought about by the baseball team, and that's the Hall of Fame induction as well as the recently new uh, form tradition of the alumni game. So we're going to talk to Coach Bobby Pierce today, and Coach, thanks for being here. Oh, thanks for having me, Jonathan. Always a pleasure to be here. And Coach, as I said, uh, Hall of Fame induction weekend for the baseball team, always a big weekend, an exciting weekend to bring back former players, uh, supporters, and this year even a radio broadcaster. Well, that's right, Jonathan. And, you know, our format has changed a little bit this year due to um, the early football kickoff on Saturday. We, uh, in the past, have had the Hall of Fame, I mean, the alumni game on Friday night and the Hall of Fame ceremony on Saturday morning. Uh, but with the 12 o'clock kick, the downtown parade, uh, we felt like it was best to give it a shot of having the Hall of Fame ceremony before the alumni game out at Riddle Pace Field. So, uh, weather permitting, uh, I think we're going to have a, a great night. Uh, we've got a great class coming in. Uh, and, and I think we're going to have uh, in between 60 and 70 players uh, back for the alumni game. Uh, so we're really excited about all of that, uh, and, and it is open to the public. Any fans and friends of the program can certainly come by uh, and watch the ceremony in the alumni game. Uh, we kick the ceremony off at 7 o'clock, and you know, as soon as we can wrap up the Hall of Fame part of that, uh, we'll get right into the alumni game. And this Hall of Fame class is... is probably a little special for you because you have worked with all these people uh, personally. A lot of the former classes have been older players that maybe you have just been in contact with, but these guys you coached, or uh, a couple of them you even recruited, and Jerry Miller, the broadcaster, also uh, you've worked with extensively. Well, th there's a lot of truth to that. And, um, you know, I appreciate any and all of the guys that uh, have been inducted into the Trojan Baseball Hall of Fame because the uh, tradition of success in the program has been so great. Uh, and I know all of these players that have earned this honor have, uh, you know, shed a lot of blood, sweat, and tears right out there on Riddle Pace Field. So uh, they all get uh, the, the highest of, of uh, respect from me. Uh, but you are right in the fact that this class is now moving into uh, players that uh, I did coach and or recruit. Uh, with Eric Wickstrom being the first player mm -hmm. I coached in the class. Um, he played uh, a couple of years for Hall of Fame coach John Mayotte, uh, and then a couple of years for me. And Eric was um, the steady workhorse type guy. He's going he's gonna to take the ball every time he goes out. Uh, much of his career was pitched on Friday night, mm -hmm. so he's got the opposing team's best guy You know he's going against. And he gave you a chance to win every game. His record was great. His numbers were great. But what I really appreciated about Eric was the fact that when he took the mound, he was going to be prepared, and he was going to give you a chance to win a Friday night game. Um, and, and just had that workman type uh, mentality. Uh, and then uh, Nate Moore uh, comes along, uh, I think, in my first recruiting class. Uh, he only played one year before he was a third round pick. Right. Uh, but in that one season, he helped us really turn the program around and get it going in the direction that I wanted it to go. Um, as he led the country in ERA that year, edging out uh, a very successful pitcher still in Major League Baseball today and Jared Weaver for that, that NCAA ERA crown. So uh, Nate has meant a lot to the program, uh, especially the timing of his arrival and the success he had in the season he was here. He was a first team All-American. He did everything for us. He, he was called at that time our closer, right. but you know there were times when he came in in the third inning, <laughs> times when he came in in the fifth inning, uh, and then times where he was a true closer. He had a lot of wins and a lot of saves to his credit. Uh, he was an everyday kind of guy, could bounce back and throw innings all the time, um, and, and just a wonderful kid that, uh, well, young man now, or man now, that uh, I was very, very proud of his success. And the funny part of that story is when, when that season ended uh, and the coaches were kind of uh, reminiscing on the season, uh, or reflecting, I guess, at that time, it, we, we made the statement, um, Boy, wasn't it great to watch a guy 
lead the country in a category, <laughs> how uncommon that is, how rare that is, and the fact that, hey, we might as well enjoy it because you may never see it again. <laughs> And then, lo and behold, the very next year, the very next year, Adam Godwin, who's also a part of this class, uh, comes along and has the type of season uh, where he was the uh, conference player of the year, another uh, first-team All-American, and led the country in stolen bases with 84. And the next closest guy to him was at 54. <laughs> so he, he, there was nobody even close uh, that year to what he had done. So. Uh, he set a Troy record for hits that season, runs scored, stolen bases, of course. He got a lot of career records as well uh, before moving on at that time in the Dodgers organization and still playing some independent baseball today. So uh, those three are uh, certainly very deserving of, of going in. And then what can we say about the, the legendary Jerry Miller, who uh, has been a part of Trojan athletics and Trojan baseball for 20-plus years. Um, most of his work is volunteer. He does have a full-time job. He does it for his love and passion for uh, Troy University, Troy University Athletics. Um, and he has uh, witnessed most all of these guys, every pitch, every hit, um, and just been a big, big part of the, uh, the Trojan family, uh, the Trojan baseball family. And we certainly appreciate his support throughout the years. And, uh, uh, that it's just so unique to uh, have the opportunity to call these guys. I get, I don't get a vote. I'm, I'm not on the voting committee, but I do get to call them and tell them that that, that they have been uh, voted into the Hall of Fame. And uh, just uh, to a person, it's a, a wow! I can't believe it. Right. Um, it's an incredible moment. Uh, I'm glad I get to share that with these players and the support personnel that uh, also get uh, inducted. Something that we do have to bring up, though, is the uh, father-in-law of one of those inductees. That's uh, Adam Godwin. His father-in-law, many people may not know, is the chancellor of Troy University, Jack Hawkins. So he may have a few extra fans there for the induction ceremony on Friday night. <laughs> well, that, that's very possible. <laughs> uh, and I know Dr. Hawkins uh, and Mrs. Hawkins have... Uh, um, a lot of things going on around <laughs> that's homecoming, exactly, that's exactly and we threw this one in there on top of it. Um, so I, I, I think they plan to uh, come by the facility and be a part of that uh, ceremony uh, before they probably have to move on to the next <laughs> thing on the schedule. But uh, yeah, Adam married Kelly, uh, I guess it's been about a year ago now, and um, uh, he, they've uh, started their, uh, their next move in life, their next venture, and uh, uh, Adam's always been very, very close to me, and, uh, and uh, we, we talk quite a bit throughout his seasons and, and whatnot, so it's going to be fun to have him back. And let's talk a little bit about the alumni game. It's, it's uh, not necessarily a, a serious game, but some mm -hmm. of these guys are going to take it pretty seriously and go out there and try to, try to throw it hard, try to hit a home run, because I know you have some little uh, incentives, awards for, for some of those kind of things. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, Ron Pierce is going to be out of town. He's won the oldest player for... <laughs> I think every year that I've been here that we've had the alumni game, he's going to be out of town, so that award's up for grabs okay. this time. But, yeah, you know, hey, these guys are competitors. They go out and they talk about, yeah, I'm just going to have a good time and I'm going to have fun. And the next thing you know, the next morning, they can't hardly move because they went beyond <laughs> what they were uh, physically ready to do. But it is uh, really set up for them to, um, to have a good time, uh, socialize, come back to the campus and to the university uh, and this thing has grown so much um, Jonathan that we are now having it every other year I mean it's just a a big thing to take on now and uh, like I said any fans around in town uh, any fans out tailgating um, from seven o'clock to about 9 30 or 10 we'll, we'll have some very interesting <laughs> things out at Riddle Pace Field. Interesting is <laughs> yeah <laughs> All right, well, let's talk a little bit about your uh, current team. Y'all just recently started your fall practice. Well, first off, you started off with um, something you've been doing for a while, probably since you started coaching here, the six-minute mile. And if you could just kind of explain what that is and also a uh, little extra that you do with the six-minute mile now. Well, yeah, the, the six-minute mile or six-minute championship mile okay. is um, – what we require all of our players to do prior to earning their way onto the practice field. So they have some time when we get here to uh, 
continue getting themselves ready for this run. Uh, but it is my belief as a head coach, a Division I baseball player should be able to go out and even though we don't train for long distances, uh, your body and you should be in good enough shape to, to run a six minute mile. Uh, we have known of people in the past, like yours truly, that did take more than one attempt <laughs> to get that done. Uh, but we do give you more than one chance to, to do that. As a matter of fact, we give you as many chances as That's it exactly takes right. for you to complete that. Um, but we recently added to the six minute mile, basically through Jeff Nichols, a former catcher in the program that uh, was a part of uh, SEAL Team 6 uh, in the Navy. Uh, we added to that a little bit of a fundraiser and we allowed our players to purchase uh, one second for one dollar up to thirty uh, that we do um, we do donate to uh, Troy for Troops and Wounded Warriors. So um, we've had very few players not making their six minute mile <laughs> these days but we've also had a nice contribution that we can make on behalf of uh, the military services and, and uh, and show our respect and, and honor those people for their service that they provide. And, um, and as a matter of fact, going back to the Hall of Fame ceremony, uh, a former shortstop of ours, uh, Hall of Famer Buck Watford, who's also served as a major in the U.S. Army for 25 years, is going to have a special presentation that he's going to make okay. uh, right after the, the Hall of Fame induction. So, uh, you know, it, it's just a Troy University is... Um, very respectful for the military men and women that have served and protected our freedoms here at home. Um, so we like to do our part in, in honoring their service. Well, I, I sure would have loved to have that chance to donate, but that's, that's a great uh, opportunity for the players these days. But uh, speaking of the players, uh, you had a great season last season. You're working in fall practice. What are you looking for out of the team right now? Well, a lot of a lot of big shoes to fill from last season, especially on the offensive side. The, uh, the good news for the Trojans is we uh, return our, our three weekend starters. Uh, Will Starling, who was a weekend starter prior to getting injured uh, and had to come out, uh, is back um, looking great, really, after his surgery. Uh, but it's yet to be determined whether or not he will pitch this season or next for his final uh, year of eligibility. Uh, but Tanner Hicks and Shane McCain, Shane McCain being the uh, pre, uh, pitcher of the year last year in the Sun Belt, and Ryan Sorcy all return. Now that's very rare to have those three back or those types of numbers back with the possibility of Will returning right. as well. So on the pitch side, the starting pitch side, uh, we feel great about that. Um, the bullpen, we've got to continue to develop. Uh, we've had the luxury of Tom Austin and Nate Hill for the last three to four years and they've been, uh, you can count on type guys, so right. replacing them is very difficult. Uh, and, and then on the offensive side, the, the big bats that we lost uh, uh, into professional baseball is going to be a huge thing to feel. I like where our team's at, Jonathan. It's way too early to uh, make any kind of prediction or, right. or, or where we might end up in the, in the conference this year. A lot of conference realignment going on as well, so there's some new teams in that I don't know all that much about. I certainly haven't seen them with my own eyes. but. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I think offensively the challenge is going to be uh, put those pieces of the puzzle to build a, a nice lineup that uh, give us a chance to win. All right, Coach, we're running out of time, but uh, once again, uh, big events on, on Friday night. Can you just give us the details of those once again? Well, yeah, 7 o'clock uh, on the dot, we plan to start the Hall of Fame ceremony. Uh, that will conclude with a special presentation by Buck Watford, a former player and, and Hall of Famer himself. Uh, that will lead us right into around 8 o'clock, the alumni game. Uh, right now we're scheduled to play seven innings, so uh, probably should be wrapping that up around 10 p.m. And then uh, from 10 p.m. to maybe midnight, it's just uh, hang out with the guys, have some fun, sign some autographs, and uh, enjoy each other's company. And it's all open to the public. All open to the public. All right, Coach. Well, thanks for joining us here today. Okay. Thanks, Jonathan. All right. Stay tuned for what's coming up this week in Troy Sports.